Do you want to get better at Football Manager? Well, I can almost guarantee there are 10 things on this list that you, the viewer right here, are not doing in your FM22 save that will ultimately make you a better player. Now, I've put some hours into this game. I've played over 3,000 hours of FM22. Yes, that is pretty darn sad. I completely understand what you're thinking. But that has helped me cultivate this list of 10 things to make you better at Football Manager. So, without any further ado, let's dive in and take a look at number one. So, the first thing I want to talk about is affiliates and how you can potentially use them better. We've all had a save starting in the lower tiers of a league and working our way up and got that senior affiliate and then once we've got to the same division as the senior affiliate the affiliation is completely cancelled. Well there are so many other options that you can do in terms of getting affiliates. Now I am on my red star save right here right now which you can check out on YouTube three times a week uh, streaming Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Monday, Tuesday and Thursday evening seven until 9 p.m. Uh, but as you can see, I have three different types of affiliate on screen right now. So I've got this team here, uh, Grafica. They are my sort of... Um affiliate club but i am the bigger team here so i can send players on loan to them for free they play in their division they also play in the serbian cup which is quite nice uh which is beneficial for me to send my top tier players to them on loan we've also got shenzhen in china now this one is financially beneficial for both teams now with this what you can do is get a increased marketing presence in a different country by having this affiliation so the world name of red star is improving in in China in my save because of this affiliation. Now I've done a full video on this thanks to my uh, moderator Balen who drew my attention to this but what we're going to do here right now is I'm going to try and get myself another affiliate. So I've asked for an affiliate here but as you can see there are different types on the screen. So we can start looking for a new affiliate to send players out on loan. That is number one. Uh, to seek a new affiliate to expand the club's scouting knowledge and network. Again also very important. This is why you should be asking for these affiliates quite regularly regularly. We should launch a search for a new affiliate in order to secure first options on players uh, from a club with good youth recruitment. So if there is a club in your nation that is notorious for producing good young players, get an affiliation with them so that you get the first option to buy them. It also might be worth exploring a partnership uh, to boost our profile, our international profile. This is the one I like going for because it makes you a lot of cash. And then we also seek an affiliation with a club to provide us a chance to recruit foreign youngsters. Again, this is kind of the same as the other youngster one. Uh, so what we're actually going to do is try and uh, worth exploring a partnership and opportunities with other clubs in other countries to boost our international profile. Now, I will say this is quite tricky and it doesn't normally happen uh, there. FM for some reason is quite stingy about this in terms of the affiliates that they are granting uh, so we are going to keep going and keep persisting but ultimately if you do get this every now and again when they accept it would be worth doing because it makes your financial output better because if I go into my finances here and we go into my income on this particular save if we go on merchandise and you can see uh, merchandise in last season we made 201 million this season we we're already at 241 the club the profile of the club hasn't really changed we're still vying out for Champions League football but the income is coming in because of that boost of the club in China because of that boost of the club in Brazil so we are spreading the name of Red Star as wide as we possibly can. Use affiliates better. So tip number two on this list is understanding where your squad is good and where your squad is bad using the squad comparison tool. So what this does is it allows you to measure how good your team is versus everybody else in the chosen division that you're in. Again, I am back on my Red Star save and this is my squad. Yes, that is Alisson. Alisson Becker in goal He's 37. We're in the year 2030. It's, we're having a good time on this save. If we go into the analyst report up here at the top of the screen and then drop down onto the comparison, you can see how my players in this squad differ to everybody else in the, in the Serbian division. So as you can see, we have the lowest average rating for age. We are the lowest age squad in the, in the division. In terms of height, we are above average. Six foot one is the highest average and 5'11 is the lowest average. We are also above average in terms of our player weights. We are 77 kilos. Come on, menu pop up on the side. There we go. The highest is Partizan, our, our deepest rival, who are 78 kilos, and the lowest is 72. But you can see we are the best in the division in terms of international uh, caps, international youth appearances, average player wage, uh, which is no real surprise. We are the best team in Serbia. But you can also do this by going through and competitions uh, uh, and positions. Sorry. So as you can see, this is how my goalkeepers compare to everybody else in your in the division. You can see how the defense stacks up. You can see how the midfield stacks up. 
were quite good in midfield. Uh, you can see how the strikers stack up again. We're quite good up top. But this has already shown me that compared to everybody else in the league, in terms of our defense versus midfield and attack, this is the area that we need to strengthen. Then if we go into the uh, physical tab, you can see we are pretty darn good in terms of the physicals. We're not very good at jumping reach. In terms of the mentals, we are, again, outstanding, as you can see. Uh, we're lacking a little bit of leadership and a little bit of positioning. And then in terms of technicalities, we are, again, pretty darn good. But from what I can see from this, we are lacking someone who can do long throws, which isn't the end of the world, but are marking along with our tackling is below the best in the league now obviously we are one of the biggest teams in serbia so we should be in theory one of the best at absolutely everything so as you can see from this i've gone okay technically we're lacking someone who can mark and someone who can tackle physically we're lacking someone who's got positioning and physically we're lacking someone who can jump that screams to me we are missing a defender or two to make ourselves even better and obviously that is valued and validated by going on the defense tab and seeing we don't have the best defense in the country so this is how you can see where the weaknesses of your squad are and adapt in the transfer market to replace those issues number three on this list is always improving the number of club staff now this is something i do all the time i value staff super highly in terms of what you can do in fm and what you have control of yes i understand it is quite easy to delegate this responsibility to your club but i implore you to do it yourself or at the very least come in here and ask for more coaches or more performance analysts or more scouts or more medical staff please keep doing it to make sure you have the best now in terms of staffing numbers i can almost guarantee that i have more staff here at red star than most of the premier league teams now obviously there are going to be elite premier league teams like manchester city man united uh, liverpool chelsea arsenal all of these all of these who will probably have in and around 12 to 18 coaches i've got 16 and i'm playing in serbia this is just be just being done by me constantly asking for more coaches and more performance analysts as i said more scouts i've got eight physios this has given us the best chance of competing and ultimately trying to achieve that goal of winning the champions league in this safe so please do make sure you're adding your staff because it will really help with something i'm going to talk about in a minute training 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 now this was always going to be on this list because i know so many fm players out there don't take care of their own training and just delegate it to their assistant well it is quite a complicated overwhelming sort of tab that you can go on but there are a few things that i will point out here so that you can make your training just that little bit better um so first of all we're going to talk about the primary training uh primary train tactic now if we go on this drop down here you can see the three tactics that i have here so if you load in three tactics and i would say suggest that you do load in three tactics you can see here we've got all three of them loaded here now we are currently using the gyrfm swans alone at v3 in this save um and we were using the incredible hulk previously but we are making sure that we are training the most recent tactic and the one that we are ultimately going to be using in the game now i also want to touch on mentoring groups as well as you can see i don't have any mentoring groups i've cleared them all for the purposes of this video but if we ask the assistant to assign you don't need to do this yourself but you can see here we've got younger players in these um mentoring groups that are going to learn from players with good personality so as you can see patrick burke here an actual real player who is a team leader has a light-hearted personality uh, and is giving a good number of influence on some of these players you can see that all of these players are going to kind of develop traits and characteristics from some of these people so as you can see we've got Allison here who is a mod professional giving a significant impact to these other two younger players who are in that group with him and that is kind of one of the main things we can do now I'm sp speaking about coaches now this is where I said you wanted to make sure you had enough coaches because if you go into your coaches tab here I'm just going to edit the coach assignments removal and ask my assistant to redo it because now you can see in terms of everything we want to see light coach workload on all of these attributes now as you can see i've got an average coach work coach workload on handling and distribution here i've also got an average coach workload on possession tactical and also attacking tactical as well so this is, these are areas that i actually do need to improve on myself because the more overworked your staff are the worse your training is going to be you can also take a look at the star ratings here for how you handle these certain sessions obviously 
possession technical being led by me is five stars but also you can see handling and distribution led by boris nad uh is uh only three stars so this shows to me i need to alter the balance of what coaches i do have in my team and now go after a goalkeeping coach to make that workload easier and then the final thing that i can say if you are on the calendar and this looks kind of overwhelming i do have my own custom training schedules as you can see one game week two game weeks and stuff like that so please do go and check those out i'll leave a link to those in the description if you don't want to do this yourself moving into the team dynamics section now this is one of the most important things in fm22 i have found having a good team dynamic leads to you winning more matches so again back at red start this is my dynamic section so obviously you do have the team cohesion the club atmosphere and the managerial support now as you can see i've been at the club for a long period of time so i'm good in terms of the managerial support the club atmosphere is pretty good but we do have two players who are unhappy the main issues are listed here patrick berg and abdullah kokoman so patrick berg wants to move to a bigger club there's not really much i can deal with there whereas abdullah kokoman wants to start more games and i've promised him as you can see from this promise that we will give him an increase in playing time now Believe it or not, this is my best striker, but I've been resting him in league matches so that I can keep him fresh for the Champions League games, which is ultimately the main goal of this save. Um, so we've been keeping him fresh. All I need to do now is give him more game time. But the best thing you can do is go onto the happiness tab within the dynamic section. And this gives you a very, very detailed inter um, uh, interpretation sorry, of how your players are feeling. So obviously we looked at Patrick Berg. He's unhappy internally at the club because he wants to move to a bigger club. He's also un a little bit concerned about his playing time resulting in his unhappiness, uh, slightly unhappy in terms of his overall happiness. Whereas some of the others you can see down here, I've got a couple of concerns about playing time. None that have been raised to me directly but they are about to materialize so Lazar uh, Samarzic is also concerned about his game time we've also got a couple down here uh, we've got Remy Hassan again concerned about his game time uh, Christopher uh, Brueggemann is supporting his teammate Patrick Berg and wants him to move to a bigger club but he's also concerned about his own playing time we've got another one down here disappointed by the club what is up with this guy uh, feels he deserves a new contract so these are quick wins that you can see quite easily obviously this guy wants a new contract we've got a couple supporting other players we've got a couple dissatisfied with our amount of playing time and you can see these before they get into real situations and actually impact your overall club dynamic dynamic and before these actually come as issues to you so please make sure you go in check on this happiness of your squad and nip things in the bud before they really damage your team so the next one will be a quality of life change for you i can almost guarantee it we have a scouting update here when as you can see you can have all your players and normally you have to cycle through and say yes i want to keep scouting this person or action it however you want but Instead of going through everything one by one, just click list here and then you can see all of the reports and then you can see the ones that you want to action. So I can see this guy here, a four and a half style potential player, Miguel Angel. Yes, we're going to have a little more of a look at him versus some of the other guys, a two star current ability player with a two and a half star potential. We're not going to look at here. Just look at the list versus the card. It will be a guaranteed quality of life changer for you. So now we're going to talk about scouting and bringing in better players to your teams. Now, how many of you guys actively search for players with release clauses? On screen, we have the save here and you go into your new search and you go into the advanced tab because I know not many people use the advanced tab. You can go on this drop down here, then you go down to contract and you can see you can search for clauses. So the main ones that I search for are minimum fee release clauses or relegation release clauses. Now, personally, let's have a look on my save. On the minimum fee release clauses it says is at most let's have a look and see who we can pick up for let's put in 30 million i don't have the budget for it but let's put in 30 million just so you can kind of see then you can see some of the players here francis lewisberg uh, from andalect he's 21 years old he is a new gen he is 25 million pounds and we can have a look and this is the type of player that we are looking to bring into red star he has a 25 million pound release clause and looking at his attributes he's pretty darn good you can go onto his contract and as you can see here minimum free release clause 24 and a half million for a player of this caliber you will probably pay a lot more on the open market for this so make sure you're searching for those release clauses especially at the end of the season if a team has been relegated please do look at the players with relegation release clauses in their contracts okay so we are talking about scouting still and we are on my shortlist tab we've gone into scouting we've gone on over into 
in my shortlist section. And as you can see, I have a shortlist of 156 players currently in this save on my default shortlist. I will also say it's worth having a majority of short, like a, a multiple shortlist so you can kind of segregate a little few things. Like I'm looking at the NXGM players, non-Serbian Wonder Kids, promising Wonder Kids filter. We'll touch on that in a minute. Uh, but this is my current shortlist. It's just a simple tick box. Just tick this box here. Keep scout reports up to date. That is then up to date with the most recent report from your scouts. Now, yes, you will get a lot more inbox messages because of this, but if you have your best player purchased, let's say someone's met a minimum fee release clause for one of your players and you need to replace them quickly, by having these up-to-date scouting reports will enable you to have the best information going into that transfer as humanly possible. You will know all about their traits. You will know how much sort of wage they're going to want you're going to know how much the transfer is going to cost you roughly having these up to date is so key in replacing these personnel but also adding the best players to your team talking about scouting one more time finding the best new gens in your save is the best way to prolong longevity of a save to find the best players coming through once all the real life players have retired well i have come up with a scouting filter which i've done a separate video on but you guys can download it in the description i'll leave a link down there so you can go and do it uh, that will enable Enable you to find the best wonder kids in your save so again we if you open up the filter here on the advanced tab these are the pl uh, player personalities that we are searching for uh, we also have a couple of other things as well we have the listed as is new gen and we've also got a couple of media media handling styles on this as well if this isn't working just take out the media handling styles this the media handling styles really do help refine it but if it doesn't work let's look for the personalities first and then we search so these are the best new gens in my save at this period of time now obviously Luca Kana if you've been watching my save is a former red star player uh, he is now playing at Manchester United but you can see some of the other ones as well so this is where you can start looking for some of the smaller teams in here like Nice for instance I should be able to bully Nice off of a player of this sort of caliber um, given my stature in the game but if we go down a bit further forward let's have a look at some of the other ones I never look at China because they aren't as good a player in 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 this save uh look at this guy uh Latif here playing at Galatasaray good little player uh 24 years of age so probably won't get any better than he is now but he's a very good squad player and you can find him at the drop of a hat using this squad filter and if you wanted to tighten it up a little bit more you could just ask in terms of the ages just filter the ages to 15 to 17 then boom here are the best wonder kids in my save best new gen wonder kids in my save for you guys to pick up as well and finally we are going to talk about poaching new gens on intake day now i'm not currently at an intake day so i'm going to just show you guys how to go about doing this but every single nation every single league every single club has a youth intake day you will have the exact same i can find that out by going on to my development center and going on to the youth candidates tab as you can see every year in march a match is organized that's all the information you need to know your youth intake will take place in march and at the moment at first glance it looks like i'm going to have a good youth intake fingers crossed you'll find that out on stream but if you want to poach players from other clubs in your country you can go on to the world tab here click on world here and then go over to transfers now this will bring up all transfers in your game under this current filter then you go on this drop down here and you go on to youth intake now initially this will bring up every single youth intake in your save so you can go through and see who all of these players are and it's usually filtered by date. So as you can see, we are currently looking at clubs in Colombia because they've had their most recent intake uh, in terms of this uh, date here. And then we scroll down and you can see all of these players having their youth intakes. You can see Rosenborg uh, and all this stuff. Zenit here. So we're running through Russia as well. Uh, Mexico, you can kind of see them now. And you can kind of just pick and choose basically. As and when these dates happen, you can go in and start approaching to sign these players. Personally, what I've been doing, or at least what I was doing at the start of this save when I need serbians in my squad i was going through and i was looking at the um intake for serbia so i was selecting serbia here and as you can see our youth intake was on the fifth of the third then the sixth of the third for partisan and then so on and so forth as it works through the division as these days go by in march i will be going through and saying okay nikola pavic do I want to sign this guy? And at the time, I would be able to approach to sign him. Obviously, yes, we will have to pay compensation on these players, but ultimately you are getting a bargain on what could be an elite tier player through somebody else's youth intake, not your own. So guys, that is my
my list of 10 tips to make you better at football manager. Let me know down in the comments section how many of these 10 you actually do in your save and if there is something that you have learned here today. And if you have, please do consider subscribing to the channel down below. But if you are into your football manager content and you like sort of rebuilds and stuff like that, check out this playlist. It's all the rebuilds that we've done in FM22 so far.